The current way in which we collect and spend our local levy dollars is unconstitutional. What we're suffering from in Washington state is taxpayer fatigue. Funding now, not later, time to call your legislator. A lot of times it's hard as a homeowner to decide, do I want to pay more to fund my own job? I don't think I'm gonna make more money next year. I just hope that I don't make less. The bottom line is the state does not allocate an amount which is enough to attract and retain quality teachers. As long as the state is not paying full freight for those teachers, it is not fulfilling its paramount duty. Yeah, your graph will include, we'll start today. So tonight, just like your reading blog always has had, I know this might be a little tougher since you don't have this to look at. I love being around kids. I'm the kind of teacher that like, I'm always glad when the school year ends, but by the time summer gets going, I start to miss being around the kids. I love it when they have that kind of aha moment where it's like, oh, they get it all of a sudden. That enriches me. I just, I really love being a teacher. We're gonna do time and money. Jerry Watson teaches third grade dual language at Mount View Elementary School in the Highline School District. This school right here is in unincorporated King County. So we're not in the city of Burien, but we're not in West Seattle either. It's a high crime area, not a place you'd want to walk around at night. But from my experience here, there are so many great families. I've talked to so many parents who come in here that have not been in the country very long, from Vietnam, from Mexico, from wherever, and they just want more for their kids. Highline is not a wealthy district, but it's not impoverished either. That's because of a tax base that includes SeaTac Airport and companies like Alaska Airlines. Money-wise, it's a district right about in the middle. On Wednesday, we were working on bringing quotes into our writing. That also goes for pay. Teachers here at Highline make about $6,000 more each year than teachers say in Pasco. But they also earn about $6,000 less than teachers in Seattle. I want you to look at your quotes and see what transition words you would use. Including those working at an elementary school just four miles from here. A lot of our teachers come to Highline, start working here, and then move out of Highline for better pay or better locations. And the students in this environment need good, solid, strong teachers. And when they all leave because we're not getting paid well, then that definitely is inequitable. I make less money now than I made last year. And I made less last year than I did the year before. Healthcare has a lot to do with that. The district not having as much to contribute. There is kind of an incentive, like if I went to the eastern side of Washington and I made the same money, it would be better. I, there's almost an incentive to leave. It's a situation playing out across Washington state where teacher salaries are surprisingly different district to district. Teachers in neighboring districts are paid fundamentally differently for the same jobs. And so you can have as much as $10,000 difference in base pay between neighboring districts. And so that put that pits district against district, teacher against teacher. Frank Ordway of the League of Education Voters says children playing on the same community ball field may be getting very different educations. You can look at just about any part of the state and find examples like this. But you could have a situation where school districts like Bellingham uh, have, are turning away applicants for certain kinds of you know, STEM field jobs, math and science positions, because people want to live there, and they have one of the highest teacher rates of teacher pay in the state. Whereas neighboring districts in the same county have positions that go open because they can't get applicants to apply, because they don't pay enough to attract people to come and live there. Teacher pay is all over the map. Arlington, for example, pays an average of $74,000, while Darrington pays $64,000. Highline averages a little less than $61,000, Bellevue $67,000. On the east side, Spokane pays $61,000, but it's $10,000 less in North Franklin, where teachers make about $51,000. Kennewick, 54,000, at Yakima, 58,000. The whole discussion of compensation, while well, it's been happening kind of behind the scenes for the last two or three years with the CFOs. Dugan uh, Harmon is the chief financial officer of Highline School District. He says the state is not funding the true cost of a teacher. My fully loaded cost, and when I say fully loaded cost, salary benefits, everything for a teacher uh, is this year is $83,700. What the state gives us on average for a teacher 
is closer to about 65,000. The bottom line is the state does not allocate an amount which is enough to attract and retain quality teachers. While there is no agreement in the state legislature about how much money is enough when it comes to the total dollar amount needed to fully fund education, the political parties do seem to agree there is a problem with the current source of that money. It's a dilemma that goes back decades as the state pushed more and more of its paramount duty onto the local neighborhood taxpayers. In the early 1990s, local property tax levies made up about 15 percent of school district revenues. Today, local taxpayers are shouldering double that burden at more than 30 percent. To put that in dollars, take Highline's most recent levy increase. Voters approved a rate of $3.52 for every $1,000 of assessed property value. That means the buyers of this house on the same street as Mount View Elementary, which recently sold for $250,000, paid $2,300 in property taxes in 2015. Of that, $940 goes to the Highline School District, and about 70% of that money, around $660, is used for compensation. It was a hard one to say, you know, yeah, we need to vote for this. This is important. <laughs> With the average Highline homeowner paying six or seven hundred dollars toward compensation. I am Song Ho, may I be your pupil. Teacher Sarah Schaefer says show. it puts her in an unusual position. I live in the district, so when I'm voting for a levy or in talking to my neighbors about voting for a levy, I feel like I'm asking them to pay for me to work. And that feels awkward. My husband too is like, why do we have to pay more in taxes so that you can bring home a paycheck just to pay for the taxes, and it's a hard decision. Local levies are the reason some school districts can offer higher salaries, and sometimes more. One of my teacher friends was telling me that their district gets a signing bonus just for signing their contract. Not even actually showing up the next year, but just signing the contract. And I'm, I was kind of shocked at that. So-called property-rich districts like Bellevue with high-end homes and a big corporate business base are able to raise more money for their schools. Both Bellevue and Highline have upwards of 18,000 students. In Bellevue, local property taxes make up about $53 million of the district's overall budget. In Highline, it's $47 million. That $6 million difference equals out to about $400 per student more in Bellevue in local levy money alone. While much of that local property tax money collected here in Bellevue does cover basic operating costs, it also covers extras like music, world languages, and brand new technology as described in this video produced by the Bellevue School District. I've never said, I don't have a computer, I don't have access to internet. Whenever we need access to technology, there's no, there's no lack. We always have what we need. We're really fortunate in Bellevue that we have tremendous, tremendous community support. We have a schools foundation that um, their sole purpose is to provide the kind of resources that the school district can't provide um, to enrich the experience for kids. Just 15 miles away in Highline, teachers say they're lacking resources. This small conference room transformed into a classroom to handle overcrowding. Portables cut the soccer field in half, and teachers must purchase their own whiteboard markers and construction paper for the classroom. Un dia fui a... If we base our school funding on who lives in our neighborhood and how much money they have available to them and what the value of their houses is, we're going to continue to see an academic achievement gap. There's just no way around it. Ellos están escribiendo diferentes cosas y se quedan los caballos. Ahora, ¿por qué estás buscando un dibujo esta vez? Delilah Lieber teaches Spanish in Mount View's dual language program and says she sees firsthand how uneven funding affects children. I think there's a major concern for equity in education. Um, that's actually a personal passion of mine. I see students that we have here at Mount View, for example, um, who are struggling at financially at home. Families have done the best they can, but they haven't had access to preschool. They haven't had access to the early learning opportunities that students at Mercer Island or other school districts have. And it breaks my heart to see how big the gap is um, coming into kindergarten. It does continue to perpetuate inequality, and it's got to stop. Lieber was among 40,000 teachers and school staffers who went on a rolling one-day strike in the spring of 2015, demanding the legislature fully fund basic education. 
High Line was one of 65 districts to walk out, picketing and marching through the district neighborhoods. And singing their frustrations at a rally. Teachers say they want the community to hear their concerns. A lot of people in the community think it's just money for us to spend on ourselves, but it's money for the students. The students need supplies, we need technology, we need markers, pencils, we need things like that. And letting the families and the community know that your students are in an environment that is overcrowded. I don't have time to spend on your individual child as I would like to. It's not just teachers and education advocates who say the system is broken. It's also the Washington Supreme Court, and justices have been saying it for more than three decades. In 1977, Thurston County Judge Robert Doran ruled and the state Supreme Court affirmed, even then the state was not providing sufficient funding for education, forcing schools to rely on local levies. At that time, local levies made up about 10% of, of most schools' operating costs. And at that time, that was considered too high. Uh, now, uh, state average is probably closer to 30%. And so the, the problem has just gotten worse since those court rulings. 35 years later, in 2012, the Supreme Court released the McCleary decision, writing, quote, reliance on levy funding to finance basic education was unconstitutional 30 years ago, and it's unconstitutional now. That's because local levies were only supposed to pay for extras, like music or college prep classes. Levies were never intended to pay for basic education, which is the state's responsibility. While a lot of coverage, and necessarily so, has gone to what's called the McCleary buckets, the McCleary class size portions, the, the material supply and operating costs, the transportation. The ruling was also very clear that the use of local levies to continue to pay for basic ed had to end. And there was nothing more basic than a teacher's salary in front of students. And so as long as the state is not paying full freight for those teachers, it is not fulfilling its paramount duty. Voters have been largely supportive of levies over the decades, but some taxpayers say they've reached a tipping point. Voters are looking for a reason now to vote no where they voted yes instinctively for years. Now they're looking for more of a reason to vote no. They're doing their homework. Jerry Gibbs founded a group called Citizens for Responsible Spending in Gig Harbor to oppose a local school bond. The bond lost, which got the attention of taxpayers in other school districts. We were contacted by the Highline citizens over there that wanted to oppose the bond measure that Highline has, has tried to pass twice. Bonds are used to build new schools while levies pay for basic operating costs. Gibbs supports levies, saying they are necessary to compensate teachers, but he says taxpayers are feeling fatigued by being asked to pay for both levies and bonds. When you look at your property tax statement, one of the largest uh, portions of that go to local schools. The problem is, is, is uh, especially since the recession, family incomes are flat, wages are flat, but, but taxes continue to escalate increasingly. Increasingly, uh, and, and it's an increasing burden to I each and every family. People want to support schools, they want to support the request for additional funding, but when they see that the dropout rates are not changing, when the outcomes are not changing, you know, they start saying, well, proportionally, I'm not getting what uh, they're asking for in tax increases and they study it more and that affects their vote, how they vote. Gibbs Group helped defeat a bond that would have remodeled 100-year-old Highline High School and built new schools to handle overcrowding. For now, voters continue to support levies, but Gibbs warns that may change in the future. We've reached that threshold of taxpayer generosity, but the demands keep coming on the taxpayers and, and their vote is their only way they can send a signal that, uh, you know, we, we want something different. While school districts have been relying on local levies for more than 30 years, it's gotten even worse during the most recent recession when the state made cuts to education. To offset the cuts, the legislature allowed districts to raise more local money through a levy lid lift. That is due to expire, though, in three more years. When that expires, we will be about $8.8 .8 million less than we currently have right now. When the levy lid drops back down in Highline, it will force the district to make devastating cuts to after-school activities, electives, and up to 100 teaching positions. If this doesn't get fixed, and this is the levy lid lift, it's compensation, and it's 
it's the influx of new monies too that districts will find themselves you know making dramatic cuts and in some cases going bankrupt I, I do believe that to be the case a permanent fix to the problem is up to lawmakers in Olympia Although the legislature poured extra money into schools in the current budget, as of fall of 2015, it's yet to address the levy problem. And the Supreme Court has grown impatient, issuing the first ever fine of $100,000 per day against the state to be put into an account for education. The court wrote in the sanction order, quote, the time has come, not just for children, but for all people of this state. <laughs>